Good evening. I'm here to discuss tonight the case State versus Batty, 2015. Did she start the fight with her husband? Well, how do we determine something like this? Well, first of all, the officers that arrive on scene, it's their responsibility to determine who is the primary and initial aggressor. The natural assumption in the case of domestic violence is that the male is always the initial and or primary aggressor. He is the one who will earn a quick one-way trip to jail without stopping at go and collecting his $200. This is simply not the case. In reviewing this case, State versus Batty, we can see that it can indeed be the female is the initial and or primary aggressor. I know this seems hard to believe as the name Miss Myra Evans Batty conjures up visions of a petite Gentile Southern belle who's ready to serve you a mint julep under the big oak tree on her big porch on her large Southern home. In this particular case, the officer on scene determined that Miss Batty was indeed the initial and or primary aggressor. She's the one who started the affray. The officer did so by stating the observations of evidence proved Miss Batty started the fight, assaulted and or injured her husband over and over. Photographs were taken and provided to the court that showed her husband had many severe scratch marks down the entire length of his face and large burn marks on his arms. This was caused by a hot iron, as well as bloody swollen lip and bite marks on his arms as well. The husband stated she had burned him with her hot iron and his injuries were indeed consistent with his testimony of the events and supported his claim as the non-aggressor. How did he prove that he was the non-aggressor? Well, first of all, Miss Batty had zero injuries. So either, either he was the victim, or perhaps he's auditioning for Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. Miss Batty had, as mentioned before, no visible injuries at all. So it seems a little unbelievable that she would claim self-defense. At least it would seem so. Perhaps Miss Batty should have said, that's why he has his lifelike injuries. He's trying out for Halloween Horror Nights. It might have supported her case a little more than her claim of self-defense. As a claim of self-defense requires the defendant prove by the preponderance of evidence, and all that means is a boatload of evidence, she was not at fault in creating the situation, giving rise to the affray. What is an affray, you may ask? Well, it's just a fancy term for a fight. And in this case, a fight can be a felony offense, or an affray can that she had a bona fide belief that she was in imminent danger or death or great bodily harm and that her only means of escape from such danger was the use of such force. Hmm. That's a little hard to believe when she didn't end up with one scratch. That she did not violate any duty to retreat or avoid danger. In other words, she didn't have to leave her home. So, in my line of work as a victim advocate, we hear it all. And it's important to know that you have to approach these types of scenes, listen to both sides of the story, observe everything that you see, what supports whose story. Make sure you separate the parties as you, as you uh, review this um, their injuries and what their story may be. If you see something, say something. 
Help your friends that may be a victim of domestic violence. Help them with a safety plan. Call for a victim advocate. Do whatever you can do to help. Thank you for your time.